What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overlord here. We're going to be talking about a few different horror topics in this video here today. We're going to be talking about Terrifier 3, Scream 7. We'll be talking about I Know What You Did Last Summer and the upcoming Goosebumps Season 2. So let's start off here by talking about Terrifier 3. We're going to talk about this report on the UK premiere of Terrifier 3. Bloody disgusting. Covered this about a week ago, but I've seen the film now and I want to get my thoughts on these reactions. Apparently, there were 11 total walkouts, 9 during the opening scene, and that was and that there was one fan confirmed to have puked. Now, this came from the L.A.D. Bible, who confirmed that at the time of the report. Although I was in and out of the screening, I did manage to witness some crazy stuff. Damien Leone, who we know directed and wrote Terrifier 3, tells Bloody Disgusting as well. One woman got up and left in the middle of the shower massacre. Another woman left the screening and said she started having a panic attack during a scene involving kids where Art impersonates a small or a mall Santa. Now, again, having seen this movie, I think the fact that I find this to be over dramatic responses speaks to how desensitized I am. And a, a lot of you who've seen the movie have reached out to me as well and asked me if I found that a lot of the reactions to be over dramatic. And I do. <laughs> some of these reactions seem over dramatic because the opening scene itself isn't as controversial as some of you are expecting it. It's a disturbing sequence. Don't get me wrong and very in line with the franchise. But these walkouts have to be from folks that just don't watch this kind of horror on a regular basis. Now, the shower scene and brutality towards children, I get it, but even that isn't as extreme as I thought it would be. So, hope all, hope all of you enjoy Terrifier 3 tonight. I am not going to be going to any theaters for the weekend, getting over this hurricane. I am fine, though, so that's good. Now, let's talk about I Know What You Did Last Summer. So, Deadline reported this a couple days ago. They said Sony's sequel to I Know What You Did Last Summer has just added Billy Campbell to the booming cast, which includes Freddie Prince Jr., Chase Wonders, Madeline Klein, Sarah Pigeon, Tyreek Withers, and Jonah King. Franchise OG star Jennifer Love Hewitt is also in talks to return. Now, I love how these reports just continue to overlook Brandy, even though Brandy is apparently meeting with Jennifer. So, again, I am very concerned about Carla's inclusion, but not to get sidetracked. Jennifer Caton Robinson, we know, is directing the follow up, which is written by Sam Lansky and Kate Robinson off of a draft by Leah McKendrick. Neil, Neil Moritz is producing for a theatrical release scheduled on July 18, 2025. A lot of you didn't waste time saying we found our killer when this casting news came out saying he's probably related to Ben. If not, he's this generation's Ben. Now, I can't say I disagree, but I have a feeling this quick assumption won't age as well as Dermot Moroni's casting in Scream 6. Yes, he does look like our modern-day fisherman, I'm not going to lie, but perhaps he's a well-executed bait-and-switch. Maybe he's our Kirby Reed of the film, in the way Kirby Reed was to Scream 6, his well-executed bait-and-switch. And if he is related to Ben, I will say this is going to feel lame. Not that... It can't be executed well, but just the idea itself sounds lame. Not to say again, you cannot convey it well on screen. It's just really all these years later, we're going back to that. All these years later, we haven't had anything in between. Basically, imagine if Scream 6 had came out all these years later after Scream 2 and you didn't have Scream 3, 4 and 5. My response to the reveal in 6 would be a lot more different because it's like you just came back and you're going right back to what you left with all those years ago. <laughs> so hopefully he's not related to Ben in any capacity. So we'll just have to wait and see what comes of that. Now let's talk about Scream 7. Scream 7 has a new update on Production Weekly that lists the shooting is supposed to last from January 7th through March 12th of 2025. Now, that's a decent amount of time to shoot a slasher film. But the more interesting topic of discussion right now also started with UK. You sent me a message alerting me to the fact that Lucia Keskin has been following Nev and Kevin on Instagram. Now, this person has a YouTube channel and they seem to have been involved in a TV show. Then this account, shout out to you, John, because you're putting out this rumor that she's actually in talks. Now, the biggest sign of anything actually happening with this actress is the fact that if you search who she's following on IG, it's not just Nev and Kevin. She's following Patrick. She's following Courtney and the other recent Scream stars. So there seems to be something going on there when it pertains to all things Scream. Or maybe she's just a big fan. Of course, there's also the possibility she might be a last minute addition to Kevin's The Waterfront show. Just throwing that out there. Now, I don't know who this person is. If you're familiar with her talent, please let me know if this is a yay or nay, because so far this would do nothing to get me excited. Going back to Sydney really just has me prioritizing 
what the fuck are you going to be doing with her over anything else you could have jennifer lopez in the cast and i wouldn't care until i know what is happening with my comfort character the way sydney is utilized is the most important thing to me and until i find out what that looks like my excitement for seven is going to remain in the toilet to a degree because of the fact that you're, you're wanting to go back to a character that means so much to me i need to trust and know that she is in good hands now obviously the creator kevin williamson i don't think would do something uh, that's a disservice to the character but the more i know the better that's just how i feel about it the star herself i've seen already reactions bashing her talking about her looks it's not a big amount of people doing this but it's just like are you kidding me right now what did you think you you thought a slasher film was gonna hire some of these big 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 a-list celebrities they're not doing that they're gonna keep hiring cheap talent a lot of people just are not very realistic when it comes to these films and who they have cast in them because scream 7 is in a predicament right now it has a lot of other things going against it right now not that the general public is all that interested in them i'm just saying it does have things going against it you're not going to go out of your way to then try to hire talent that's more expensive than ever before when you have nev campbell who's probably getting more than what she did in five probably even more than what she did in four she has you have courtney cox who's probably getting more than what she had in five and six patrick dempsey those are some expensive names to spyglass right now so those are going to be the most expensive talent they get and they're going to try to keep everything else cheap this is not shocking to me at all you might see one or two others but they're going to try to keep this cheap to go in line with the budget that's at hand they don't have like a 200 million dollar budget or anything and if they did that'd be stupid it's not going to make that much money back it's a slasher film the, the screen films have been successful because of the fact that they've been cheap cheaply made not like obviously looking like sci-fi films or anything but they've always been smart with their budget so expecting big name stars just i don't get that why would you expect big name stars and of course every nobody is going to turn into a somebody if they're given an opportunity now the last thing we're going to talk about here is going to be goosebumps goosebumps season two aka goosebumps the vanishing premieres january 10th 2025 the new story begins with devin and cc fraternal twins adjusting to life with their recently divorced dad anthony when the duo discovers a threat steering they quickly realize that dark secrets are among them triggering a chain of events that unravel a profound mystery as they delve into the unknown devin cc and their friends alex cj and frankie find themselves entangled in the chilling tale of four teenagers who mysteriously vanished in 1994. now this is said to be going back to the anthology stuff but it's not doing it in the vein that i know most diehard fans of goosebumps like myself would want just give us new takes on the original books stop all of these intertwining story things that are just pulling in aspects of the books give us a legitimate anthology updated version of the 90s show what is so hard with doing that i know goosebumps fans would love that they just refuse to do it they refuse to do it hollywood always does what it thinks we want instead of doing what we actually want let me know what you guys think about this down in the comment section below if you haven't already of course make sure you subscribe turn on post notification you never miss video in the description i'll have links on my social media accounts i'm on facebook twitter and instagram you can message me there of course let me know if there's any movies news or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future and with all that in mind guys i will see you in the next video